Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the United Methodist Church. I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm Tony Condon. I'll be your worship leader today. Radio broadcast and altar flowers are in honor of Nancy Danielson for the many years she's directed the praise team and for Tim and his support as he took, took care of passing out and collecting the music. Please continue to mail in your financial support to us at 102 South 8th Street, or if you'd like to tithe online or give a donation online, uh, there's a web link to our website on the screen. I'd like to ask Joan Eveleth to come forward for an announcement. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, we're honoring Nancy Danielson today. So, Nancy, I know you don't want to come up here, but would you please? <laughs> For over 15, or over 15 years ago, Carol Swartz brought the idea to Nancy about forming a praise team. Nancy took the idea and ran with it, and she formed it and directed us for over 15 years. It was a big, big job. Finding singers, the appropriate music we sang, each time we sang, communicating that with the accompanist, the pastor, the office, organizing practices, the five o'clock Christmas Eve services, Easter sunrise service, organizing praise team performances outside the church, the Memorial Day services, Sweet Corn Days, community church services, and nursing home performances. When the Chancel Choir was fundraising for their trip to New York, Nancy organized and put on an elegant fundraising dinner. We asked Nancy to choose some songs that were her favorites. So the praise team is going to sing those this morning, and, and if you'd like to sing along, please, please do. Uh, Nancy, we have... Sorry, have a couple gifts for Nancy and, and the flowers are for hers. So would you please join, and, and I know we're celebrating and this is joyous, so would you please join the praise team in thanking Nancy for her tireless work and time spent in praising God with music. really special today. I'm, I'm excited to hear them sing some of my favorite songs. It's been a good run. We're blessed with a great group of vocalists in both the praise team and the chancel choir. And while we might be a little bit of a gray-haired bunch, we, are, we have a lot of fun together. And we enjoy enhancing our worship with music ministry. Both groups appreciate Randy Yackel, who's kind of the cog that keeps our wheel going. <coughs> So I just need to lighten my load right now, and as I do that, I'm especially grateful for the media team that brings the service to us live on Facebook, KILR, and Mediacom. Please know how important that ministry is, as well as right here in our sanctuary. There's just no telling how many people we are reaching. So thank you to the praise team and my church family. Oh. <laughs> I just had to show that part of the order. <laughs> first song. The first song we'd like to sing is 2088, Lord, I Lift Your Name on High.
Our next song is Taste and See, number 2267. Next song is 2108, Oh How He Loves You and Me.
our next song is for Tim. Tim, this is for you, my friend. Boys and Girls Assurance March. We're a bit rusty. Okay. Our last song is number 2270, He Has Made Me Glad. Please rise and join me in the call to worship. We come together this day drawn by the light of God's love. God's eternal kingdom, darkness and despair are vanquished. In God's eternal realm, peace and hope reign. Let all the people praise God with their music and their voices. Let all the people praise God with their deeds of loving kindness. Praise be to God. Please stay standing for the opening hymn, number 98, To God Be the Glory.
Please be seated. Join me in the opening prayer. How magnificent the sight must be. The vision of John proclaims a crystal river flowing from God's throne. Comforting light, peace and hope for all God's people. Darkness has vanished. Open our eyes and our hearts to catch a glimpse of this vision. Help us to place our trust in you that we may faithfully serve you, knowing what awaits our glory. Amen. Please rise for the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We live our lives tiptoeing around the facts that we often say words we should have never uttered. We do those things we wish we could take back. Yet you would reach out to take us by the hand so we walk together in the garden of grace. Let us offer our hearts and our brokenness to our God who offers us mercy in these moments. With time after for personal <coughs> prayers, join me as we use the words found below praying. Lord, you know how easy it is for us to sit here, tethered to our darkness and fear. We get bound up by chains of mistrust. We dare not to hope, for so many times before we have been disappointed. So we sit here and wonder, where are you? We are not like unlike the disciples who wondered also, who feared. Lord, come to us in our darkness. Flood us with your powerful light of love and mercy. Help us to our eyes to good news of eternal glory. Give to us visions of the place in which love and hope will reign. Forgive our stubborn resistance to your mercy and your love. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join me in silent prayer. As we gather here today of children of your of you please hear our prayers please hear our prayers for those who are suffering whether it's physical whether it be mental whether it be relationships or finances in their lives may they feel the Holy Spirit in them as they work and they suffer we pray for all including the Ukraine this morning dear Lord and we thank you for your everlasting love, and we know that through your son's death, we are all forgiven. Amen. Would the children please come forward? Well, was it good to wake up this morning and see some sun outside? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's cold, yeah, well, can't help that. Maybe it's the climate change, you think? 
that we're getting colder weather? Or is it just living in Iowa? Just living in Iowa, yeah. And a wind, yeah. Well, today I'm talking about the Lord has given us much. What do you think I'm talking about? Jesus is one. How about something else that God gave us? Our earth, our lives. He's getting it all in three words. Anything else? What would you like to say? Heaven and earth. Heaven and earth. And being saved. That's right. Yep, he said Jesus. That was the best gift of all. Forgiveness. That's right. Pretty big word, isn't it? It is when you think about it. When you get older, you'll realize what forgiveness is. Wait till you get older and you have to do something you wish you hadn't. It'll happen. I'll ask your mom and dad, are you perfect all the time? They didn't answer. They're afraid to answer, maybe, huh? They know the truth. That's right. So does God. So let's uh, bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord, bless these children. We are so grateful that we have them in our church and they come to listen to this sermon. We pray that you would be with them now as their summer vacation starts. No school. Let them enjoy the summer, run and play, and maybe have a chance to go to camp. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I moved, they moved a hymn on me. I tried to pick uplifting hymns this morning, and they did as well when they were singing the songs that Tim and Nancy picked out. So we're going to sing one more song. It's kind of like a musical Sunday, kind of nice. Let's turn to All Things Living in the Black Book 2008. Before I read the scripture, I just want to welcome everyone this morning. I see some faces I don't know and I won't be able to get to you, but thank you for coming to our church this morning. And thank you for everyone who's watching us out there in the uh, TV land and listening to us on the radio. So the scripture this morning is, uh, goes along with the title of my sermon, which is You Have Given Much. And it's John 14, 23 through 29. 
Jesus replied, if anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own, they belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You heard me say I am going away and I am coming back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens so that when it does happen, you will, you will believe. Here ends the gospel. So I titled the sermon, You Have Given Much, based on the scriptures. And of course, God has inspired people to create humorous things to say and read. And so I found one that deals with love, and I thought maybe you would enjoy it. Perhaps you read the story about a woman and her husband who came to a pastor and said, we're getting a divorce, but we want to make sure you approve. There are people who come to a pastor hoping that when they say there is no feeling left in the marriage, the pastor will say, well, if there's no feeling left, then you can split. I can't think of any pastor I know that would say that, but in this scenario, they do. Instead, this pastor said to the husband, the Bible says you're to love your wife as Jesus Christ loved you. And the man says, oh, I can't do that. The pastor's thinking, he said, I gotta keep talking, I gotta get this, get them to read and understand or so they don't split. If you can't begin at that level, then begin on a lower level. You're supposed to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Can you at least love her as you would love a neighbor? The husband said, Nope, that's way too high a level for me yet. In desperation, the pastor said, The Bible says love your enemies. So um, today's scripture refers to the gift God gave every one of us. And verse 26 says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So he has sent us an advocate. Now you can't see it, but you can feel it sometimes. Every once in a while you start to do something and someone, you feel this feeling, I don't think I better do that. To me, that's the Holy Spirit working within us. Verse 27 says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. These are powerful words describing the fact that we have been given much. Again, God gave us a teacher, an advocate for peace. It's that whispering voice inside of you, that feeling you don't know where it came from. So pray for personal peace, and for, of course, peace all over the world. We are not left to dance alone on this world. And sometimes life can feel like a waltz, some like a jitterbug. Sometimes it feels like a ballet, a ballet. You know, some things go fast, some things go slow. Things are just moving, moving beautifully in our lives. Well, he, we're not alone. God gave us the Holy Spirit to help show us our love for him by following his teachings. Have you ever watched the TV program Dancing with the Stars? And now they've got one where it's a parent and a child, too. Well, they find celebrities on Dancing with the Stars who will come on TV and do ballroom and Latin dancing. And if you ever watched some of them and the first time they started to learn, it was comical. But by the time they had to go on stage, they had gotten lots better. 
Not everyone's born with a talent of being able to dance or have rhythm or have ballet hands, as they talk about it, when you're dancing. They get better. But you know they're not alone. They have that human teacher to work with them, but also they have the spirit with them to learn the steps and dance along with them. Can't imagine how nervous they were the first time they went out and had to do that in front of TV and all the people there. Just like the stars on Dancing with the Stars, we are not left to dance the dance of life alone. You're never alone. We have a coach, a helper, to dance along with us, showing us the steps and enabling us. Have you ever heard the expression, love you, man? I just love chocolate cake. I love your hair. Did you get a new blouse? I really like it. I love it. Well, you would have heard me say, I love frosting. And I'm diabetic, but I love frosting. I went to a celebration yesterday, and there was a corner piece there. Being so, I said, could I have the corner piece? I like frosting. My sister and I, used to, we fight over the uh, corner pieces. So I love frosting. So when was the last time someone told you they loved you? I can't remember. I think it was yesterday he said that. Maybe not. But did you believe him? Of course I believe my husband loves me. I'm beginning to believe he can't do anything without me. But what about, can you think of anyone else? I have friends I say I love them, because I do. It's a different kind of love. The love for your partner's intimacy. A part, it's a love for a friend. That's just personal. I just love a friend. How do you know when someone really loves you? Are words enough? My mother taught me actions speak louder than words. Actions speak louder than words. Because it's real easy to say, I love you. The reason I'm not turning is because if I turn, then the mic doesn't fill, it, fill the, all the noise in for me. So don't mind if I don't look at you. Love today has become only a word. It's, op it's spoken openly and rarely demonstrated. Our society has confused love with intimacy. We need to be careful the way we use the word love. So what is the state of the world in which you live? Who do you love? Why do you love them? Verse 23 says, if anyone loves me. So if you love the Lord, it makes a whole lot of difference in your life. So if he says, if anyone loves me, do you love Christ? And how do you love him? Let's go on. He will obey my teaching. Loving Christ involves more than going to church on Sunday, singing in the choir, serving on a committee, being a chair of something, fixing something in the church that's broke, sewing school bags, serving and helping with a monthly Wesley noon meal, or working with the youth in the church. Loving Jesus believes that his will, not yours, will be done. Sometimes loving Christ means we have to change. You have to come out of your comfort zone because to show your love for Christ means you need to show it for other people as well. We all are missionaries. Every day of our life, we're a missionary, speaking the word of the Lord to anyone we meet. Now, we might not say anything, but our kindness will. Our kindness will. Our smile will. Opening a door or saying good morning to someone who looks really down in the grocery store. I have a story to tell you about a lady phone rang and she picked it up and on the other end was this very feeble soft voice and it said is this St. Paul's Presbyterian Church oh Jill thought I don't have time for this I gotta get ready to go out for lunch the lady continued I live alone and am confined to a wheelchair my children live alone 
live in another state so I don't get to see them, and I get so lonely I can't stand it. I'm not able to get to church. Could you just talk to me for a little while? Suddenly, Jill felt really embarrassed. There was a long moment of silence as she looked around her house. It wasn't that dirty or messy. She had planned to have lunch with a friend, but there's always another day for that. So she returned to the conversation to this little old lady, and she said, I'm glad you got the wrong number. I would very much like to get to know you. Please give me your name and address, and I'll be there within the hour with fixings for lunch, and we can get to know each other. That's an example of the love of Christ, setting aside self, changing directions, reaching out to others. You can do this. You can do this. And we have a helper, so we don't need to fear anything. It says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and not be afraid. So the other day I was listening to some podcast or some preacher that was talking about worry. And he made such a valid point, I want to share it. Every day we worry about today. And every day we worry about tomorrow. So every day we double worry. We gotta leave tomorrow alone. We were only promised one day at a time, so there's no sense worrying about it till we get there. So you need, you're you only promised that one day, so don't worry about it. Hand that worrying over to God, and that's hard. That is hard to give up your worrying. And you know, if you do that, you just gain some peace. Because we've got to worry about today and tomorrow, you've got double worry. If you only worry about today, that's half as much worry. So there you gain your peace. We have fears. We all have fears. What do you fear? Anyone afraid of heights? I don't like going up on a ladder too far. I might have younger, but now and I'm going up a ladder too far. Small spaces, anyone claustrophobic? How about growing old? Yeah, we all, I'm all seeing a lot of smiles. Growing old, I don't want to get old. I got things to do and places to go. Losing control, do you have to keep yourself in check every day? Are you afraid of change? Are you stubborn and you don't want to change? Well, some of us have that problem. I personally hate spiders and mice. Those are, I, I just, getting better. I used to call Stephen to pick up the spider, but can't do that all the time. He bends over, he might fall over, so I have to get the spiders. I'm getting better at it. I hate spiders. And we were all worried about the COVID, and we still have some worry. Now we have this new monkey flu, or is it monkey pox that's coming? It never ends. So where does your fear come from? Pray for release from your fear. I love the old song, Amazing Grace. It says, "'Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieve." And 1 John 4, 18 says, perfect love casts out fear. So perfect love for our Lord will help you not worry and will cast out your fear. So if your heart is filled with the love of God, you don't have to look in the book of discipline. You know what that is. That's kind of like the Methodist Bible. You don't have to look in that book to decide what to do. No one's looking over your shoulder to make sure you do the right thing. You do it for one reason alone. You do it because you love Jesus and you want to please him in any way you can. The work of the Lord happens on earth because he has captured our hearts with love. So an old Scottish woman went from home to home across the countryside selling thread, buttons, and shoestrings. And when she came to an unmarked row, she'd throw a stick up in the air, and whichever way the stick pointed, that's the direction she went. She didn't have GPS. So one day, someone noticed that she just kept throwing that stick up, trying to get that stick in the way, 
and the way she wanted to go. And of course, someone said, why do you keep throwing that stick? Well, it keeps pointing to the left, and I want to take the road on the right. How long do we persist in throwing our spiritual stick in the air because, because it points in a direction we do not want to go? Last thing we're going to talk about is peace. God's peace is not like the peace on the world. Amen to that. Just look at Ukraine. At least it's not on CNN day and night anymore. But it was hard to watch what's going on over there. And I want to thank Nancy for the peace she gave us, leading the praise team and such beautiful music we heard. And then Tim, he took care of the music, and then he'd read for them whenever they had a part that be read. He had a beautiful voice for that. And just a little side thing. Whenever there was something going on, Nancy would say, I'll make lasagna. And we all said, we'll help you. No, Tim will. So Tim got roped into making lasagna a lot of times. But we sure appreciated the fact that they were so giving about making sure we had lasagna. Or he did, they made other things, but they didn't need help. They were a couple to work in the mission of Christ. I am glad we are honoring you today. Thank you so much for all you have done. The world peace is based on its resources. You know, if Ukraine had more resources, they could probably do even better than what they're doing. But they don't have any planes. Wouldn't some planes make a short work of some of what's going on over there? Uh, and it's based on material things. For those of us who are here in the sanctuary, we probably are out there. We have enough food to eat. We have clean water to drink. And that gives us peace. We don't have to worry about it like the young mothers on the shortage of formula. I heard that the Fairmont uh, Walmart's full of formula. I bet you it was gone before the day was over. They'll have to go back and make their formula, won't they, like some of our mothers did. Peace came to the Ukraine when they were successful in defeating Putin's army. They didn't do too well on the south side, but they didn't get the capital. And they are retaking one village at a time. So that's got to give them peace that they will still remain the Ukraine and not be taken over by Putin. If you want to get peace, you need to build your relationship with God. I couldn't, I couldn't get along without it, honest and truthfully. Lost two kids. I had my peace because I knew they were at a better place. And I had more to do with making the boys feel better, Jake and Jeremy. If you improve your relationship with the Lord, things go better in your life. You don't get upset about things that used to bother you. It's no big deal. You put everything in perspective, which is important in our lives. Pray for it every night. I pray for my relationship will grow, Lord. Help me. Please help me some days. Pray for that relationship with him to grow within you and him. Now, peace is something you hope for, like peace in a family. I know families, they have brothers don't speak to the sisters or the folks don't speak to one son. We hope that they find peace. Peace is something you work for something you long for, but to the follower of Christ, which you all are, peace is God's wonderful gift, a gift received by faith. The world enjoys peace when there's an absence of trouble. Christians, followers of Christ, enjoy peace despite trouble, in spite of trials. Why? Because the presence of the Holy Spirit is in us. Remember, we have been given much from our God. The Bible says, or in my research, said there are 45 gifts listed. I didn't look up the list, but I thought, 45? I don't, didn't have a clue. Did anyone else know there were 45? Just Google it, and you'll see what you find. Today I talked about the Holy Spirit, our advocate, our teacher, love, and peace. But I would be remiss if I did not talk about the fourth gift, one of my favorites. Everyone knows, don't you? John 3, 16. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Enjoy every day what God has freely given to you out of your faith. Amen. Have the uh, ushers wait on us and bring our offering up.
Would you uh, stay standing and join me in the prayer of dedication? And we thank the Lord for the gifts that he has richly given us and that you have chosen to share with us through your tithes and offerings. Thank you. Father, my life for you. Help me to go the early stage of my life in your faithful service. Enable me to utilize my time, energy, knowledge, finances, and other resources for your services. Let me wholly commit my life to you and services so that your kingdom can be populated. Please let my services be acceptable before you and let me receive your overwhelming blessings throughout the days of my life. For in the name of Jesus Christ. We have some joys and concerns this morning that uh, we uh, want to put Tim Danielson on our prayers, Steve Hansen, Carol Williams, Sheila King, Nancy Rangloss, Larry Montandon, Dave Robinson, Mark Hood, Colton Burgess, Diane Blum, Matt Morberg, Paige Smith, and Heidi Goble. And we have uh, sympathies we need to extend to Donna Brooks on the loss of her sister, Pat Nisik. She died last night of cancer. So keep Donna Brooks and her family in your prayers. And Marie uh, Grimms is in the hospital. So pray for her. She was admitted yesterday. She has sepsis. Huh? Can't hear you, so I'll just go. Anyway, keep Marie Grimm's in your prayers. And you know, when I preach, we sing the Lord's Prayer. So stand up and let's glorify the Lord by singing the Lord's Prayer. I may have used the wrong name for Marie. Dahlke. Last name is Dahlke. Barb Carlson and Nancy McCullough's parents, are her daughters, their mom. So we're going to do one more hymn, and then we're going to do 327. I told you it was going to be a musical Sunday, and that while you're getting your page turned, please remember the people I listed in the, that are sick, suffering from cancer or loss of family member, please include them in your prayer and pray for the world with it has the same sufferings all around the world. Okay, Randy, crown him. All right. <laughs>
May God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Now you have every spiritual gift you need as you eagerly wait for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be free from blame on the day when our Lord Jesus Christ returns. Enjoy your week. <laughs>